Jesus is how I can raise up ordinary men, turning them to become supernatural beings, financial persons, making life better, bringing people from the dungeon of sin, bringing them into the faith, planting their feet, and rising them. Get your Bible with us and our anchor scripture is from First Samuel chapter 30. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. Verse 2, and it had taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was born with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Verse 4, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Verse 5, and David two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam and Jezreelites, Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelites. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved and every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me either the effort. And Abiathar brought the altar and the effort to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after the troops? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. In verse 9, so David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook of Bessel, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook of Bessel. Verse 11, and they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him to drink water. Verse 12, and they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins and when he had eaten, the his spirit came again to him for he had eating no bread, nor drunk any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, to whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days are gone, I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cheratites, and upon the coast of the of the coast which belonged to Judah and upon the south of Caleb and we burned Ziklag with fire. And verse 15, and David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me thy, by unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. I will bring thee down to his company. Verse 60, and when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating, drinking, and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twin light and even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men which rode upon the camel and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekite had carried away and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoiled nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all 
And verse 20, we read correctly all together. And David took all the flocks and all the heads which they drove before those other cattle and said, This is David's spoil. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Shout the amen like thunder. Sit down on your enemy's head. And make sure they are screaming while you sit down. And cross your leg because you are in charge. They can't stop you. And they can't stop what has been written about you. I thought you were shouting the amen well. I want to welcome every one of us. Wherever you are. Viewers at home, you are on to Champions Television. Today is our fruit of the womb service. Give Jesus a clamp offering. I thought you were clamping hand for Jesus. Duh. But I will be approaching you from another direction where God has spoken to me. And I will a little bit encapsulate in part of the message a bearing from the fruit of the womb but this is what God wants me to share with you today and I trust God you'll be blessed amen. somebody shout a bigger amen. amen I want to minister or God want to speak to us today on what I titled silencing robbers of destiny Someone say silencing robbers of destiny. Mm. Say it again. Silencing robbers of destiny. Shout it well. Mm. Arm robbers are the elder brother of thieves. Did you hear that? Thieves don't necessarily carry arms. And there are three levels of thieves. And one of them are called the opportunists. They don't prepare to steal, but when the opportunity comes, they seize the opportunity to steal. So these are the first level of thieves. If you give them opportunity and put money around the environment they will steal that means don't tempt them if you tempt them they will fall but if they don't see the temptation they will not go if you make them treasurer they will steal if you keep money close to them they will steal if your purse mistakenly fell and they saw the money they will steal so these are the first level they are called the opportunists the second level of thieves are called seasonal thieves. These are thieves that operate in season. What do I mean? They are giving information that the course is clear. And they can go in to rob. They are giving information that the securities is not tight. So whenever the security is weak, they strike and run back. And the third level is what I call the well-organized professional thieves. This one, it is their profession. They, they live on it. So they call, I call them the higher grade and they are called the arm robbers. They live on it. They are professionals. It is their field. They know the expertise. Even though there are security agents around, they can still strike and know the amount of police, they will bring them down and know how to enter. They can rob a bank with full guarded information. They have sophisticated weapons. They are well inclined with the computer edge. They know what it means on how to blow up the strong room. And so we call them arm robbers because they cannot rob without arms. They carry arms to rob. So what makes their subject or their, 
people they deal with to be afraid of them is because they don't just appear, they appear with arms to intimidate you and rob you. And that will connect me to our topic today, silencing the arm robbers of destiny. There is a difference between when a thief steals your destiny and there's a difference between when an arm robber of destiny steals your destiny. It simply means it was forcefully taken away from you. Your rights, your privileges, your opportunities, what has been designed. And so ladies and gentlemen, what is destiny? Destiny is in other words, got him from a word, destination. So, when I say I am a child of destiny, it means there is somewhere I am going. Did you get what I'm saying? It means what? There is somewhere I'm going. That this is not who I am born to be. That I am better than where I am because I am a destiny. Destination. That is what it means when the Bible says you are a child of destiny. You are a destination. You are a time bomb with glory package going to somewhere to happen. You are a time bomb with glory package going to somewhere to happen. And so what is destiny? It is what has been written about you by God that can never be changed at all, at all. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hello? Hello? So, my destiny, are your mommy, my destiny is what has been written about me. It can never be changed. That is what I brought to the world. Hello? Romans chapter 8 verse 30. Let me read the scripture for you. It will help you. Romans chapter 8 verse 30. Moreover whom he did predestinate. The word predestinate means before you destiny. God predestinates you. Look here. Let me explain that. Moreover for whom he did predestinate. Meaning before you appeared on the scene of the earth. You have been predestinated. You have been, you have been clothed and coded. Your destiny had been settled. No wonder Jeremiah said, Oh, before I was formed from the womb of my mother, have he known me by name? So I had been predestinated. What does that mean? Before you came to the earth, before your father and mother thought about giving birth to you, God know your name, God know your future, God know your career, God know your profession, God know you are going to be a preacher, a counselor, a local government chairman, a governor, a president, a, a billionaire, a trillionaire. So, hear this. Before your father and mother thought of coming together. So, the issue of destiny is very serious. So, if I have been predestinated, there is no man that can stop my destiny. You do not get what I'm saying. Don't allow anybody to say, I made you what you are. No! They were only privileged to contribute. They cannot make you what you are. Oh God, <laughs> I don't know if I'm talking here. I, I, am I talking to somebody here? If somebody say it is by me, you are what you are. That's a bl blunt lie. They cannot make you what you are. Because before you were born, you were already formed. Before you came to the war, your future was created. Before you came to the war, your husband was established. Before you came to the war, your children was established. Before you came to the war, your dreams were established. I have been predestinated. You cannot stop a man that God has predestinated. I have been predestinated. It means I have been ordained for my destiny. Pre 
is before destiny. So before I came, my God has settled my destiny. So what I am becoming now had been settled by Father. In meaning, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost said sometime in 1967, sometime in 1937, sometime in 1982, sometime in 1991, that you are going to come to this earth, that you become a lawyer, that after that you become a governor, and after that you become a president, after that you become a private owner of a jet, after that you, am I talking to somebody here? Now hear this, where you are now, it's not the end. It is a destination. Am I talking to somebody here? It is a destination. <laughs> now hear this. Robbers of destiny, harm robbers of destiny, they know they can't change it. They know they can't change it. They know they can't stop it. And if you are not careful, you will go through life. No wonder he said in Ecclesiastes, there is an error I have seen under the sun. This is an error that proceeded from the rulers. I see servants walking, riding on oxes. I saw princess walking barefooted who switch their destiny it is what i call destiny i'm robbers your destiny you are supposed to rule you you are supposed to serve this one but now this one is serving you why that was not how i created you he said this is an error that error must be corrected today Makata, Makata Yata, that error must be corrected today. Who took your destiny? Who took your destiny? Who took your destiny? They will vomit what they took. And they go. Listen, sit down, let me talk to you. It is an error to say sir for somebody that is supposed to say sir to you. Am I talking to somebody here? You have tried to win a seat. You have tried to be in government. You have tried to enter a position. But small, small boys that you taught those days are the one you are saying, sir, somebody switch your destiny. And it is a ruler. I came to silence them. I came to silence them. The enemy knows he can't change. He, he can't stop your destiny. Because that is what has been written. He can't change it. So he transfer it and rob you. And the greatest havoc that can ever happen to a man is to be in honor and understand it not. The Bible says a man in honor that understands it not is like a beast that perishes. The Bible dignifies you say, yea, a royal nation, a peculiar person. You have been set aside. You have been set aside to show the wonders of the living God. Say, no, ye therefore that ye are God's he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's what the Bible says. Say, I know the thought. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thought that I think towards you, said the Lord, the thought of peace and not of evil to give you, to give you, to give you an expected end. I know the destiny that I think about you. The destiny of peace, not of evil. To give you an expected desire. To give you your heart's desire. I know your destiny. That's what the Bible says. The enemy knows that God has dignified you. He said, went forth and said, I shall make you the head and not the tail. 
Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? Say, I shall make you, I shall make you the head and not the tail. So, why, where, where is this destiny of being the tail coming from? Because that was not what was written about you. What was written about you is that anywhere you enter, you are the head and not the tail. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Let me show you this. You need to hear this. Genesis 1, 28. And the Lord God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. Now hear this. Look up. And the Lord God bless them and say, Be now hear this. Fruitility is a commandment. Do you hear me? Fruitility is a commandment. It is not an opinion, not an or, 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 or a suggestion, not a prayer point or a prayer request. It is a commandment. Did you hear what I'm saying? God Himself did not say ask for fruitfulness, He said. Be. It's not if you will be fruitful. It's not you shall be fruitful. He said, be fruitful. That is why you have a reproductive organ to produce. Am I talking to somebody here? Where is that low sperm count coming from? Where is that fibroid coming from? Where is that seed coming from? It was not part of your destiny. Fruitfulness is part of your destiny. I command you be fruitful. Kabayata. You are commanded to be fruitful. I say you are commanded to be fruitful. <laughs> God told them be fruitful. So why will you not be fruitful? Who is saying you cannot be fruitful? Hear this. Goat, pig, animals, dog don't need the service of a gynecologist. <laughs> you do not hear me. On their day of delivery, there is no nurse. No nurse take the delivery of goat. So how much more you a creation of God? I command you shall be fruitful. Makata bayata parakada jako yaka yagoto katukata kologotuke ya parakutukata. I prophesy be fruitful. I prophesy be fruitful. It is part of your destiny. Somebody shot fire. Hey, hey, hey. I feel like screaming here. Dogs don't fast to pray to have children. Goats don't fight to pray to have children. When it is time they have children. They don't go for maternity. They don't go for medical checkup. Who keep them? Our heavenly father. If God care for animals, how much more you Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Dogs don't know what it means to have bridge bed. Goats don't know what it means for placenta to cover the cervical. Goats don't know that. All they know is that they were commanded to be fruitful. I prophesy you will receive miracle with the service without the service of a gynecologist. Sit down. Can I talk here? I'm sorry to say this. If you're a gynecologist, don't get angry. But they are going to lose customer after the service.
is already open. I know who I have. I know who I have. I know what I carry. I am commanded to be fruitful. I cannot be buried. Somebody shot fire. Sit down. Let me behave myself. Tempting me. Who are destiny robbers? Destiny robbers are destiny hijackers. Well, you know, hijackers of aeroplane. They will be in the aircraft, they will smuggle up their weapons inside, and they will pretend to be part of the passengers. They are highly strong terrorist. Their purpose is to divert the aircraft to their own route. They don't want the aircraft to go to its destination. So they hijack. And for them to hijack, they must show what I call the strategy of friendliness. So they will be inside you, around you, smile like you, look like you. You will spit out spit. But their own, when they spit out, it is blood. So they are around you. They cannot hijack your destiny if they don't board your own aircraft. So they can come in like a brother. They can come in like a cousin. They can come in like a fiancé. They can come in in ministry like your best friend. They can come in in ministry like a helper. But they are destiny hijackers. talking about hijackers of destiny. All of a sudden, when they see you are cruising at an high altitude where you are above every other human being, they now know there is nobody to stand to help you. They will deceive you to leave the church where you are so that you don't get help. They will disconnect you from the true helpers and make you feel you are okay. When you are now in the airspace, you hear some pandemonium. They took over the old plane and took over the pilot and put God. Anybody that tried to stop them, they killed that person and changed the route of the flight. Some of you, your route of your destiny flight had been changed. I don't know who changed them. Every destiny I jackass catch fire. Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Yeah, 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 yeah. They are jack. They have changed your route. You are flying. You are moving, but you are not moving to the right destination. You are moving to the calculated destination of your enemy. They say, provided you are moving, but you are moving anti-clockwise, they are okay. 
That is why some people are moving, but they are not a movie. Nobody is watching them. Why? Because they are going the wrong way. They are going the wrong way. Who changed your route? Can, can I talk here? When you started to board the flight of destiny, this was not how you planned it. When you started the flight of this marriage, you never started by saying you will stay 10 years without a baby. But who did this to you? Destiny hijackers, they diverted the aircraft of your marriage. But I came to refocus you to your route. By now, you should have built a house. By now, you should have bought a car. By now, you should have been a governor. By now, your ministry would have been known worldwide. By now, you should have been having seven children. But they diverted your destiny. Who changed that? Who hijacked me? Who hijacked my destiny aircraft? Today, catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Oh my God, I have some holy anger here. I am so annoyed. Today I silence them. They want to silence me to give them total rest in peace. Am I talking to somebody here? To silence them means to kill them. To silence them means to put them in permanent kumatus. Today, 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 I change your route back to your destination. Can I teach here? Can I teach here? Destiny hijackers. Sit down. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Destiny robbers. They are people assigned by the devil to steal your star. What do they do? They steal your star. Anyone commissioned by the enemy to steal your star, I command them to die by fire. You did not hear me well. The next, who are destiny robbers? They are destiny hunters. Star hunters. Do you know people that are called star hunters? They are like ham robbers. They don't hunt ordinary people. They look for people who have made it. They look for people who are stars. They can be in your family. But you don't know why they fight you. Now hear this. You might not be rich, but you are a star. Because you are still in the destination. If you are going to Lagos and you have not gotten to Lagos, nobody should conclude you. Your condition could be that you are in Lokoja, but you are still going to Lagos. Your condition is not your conclusion. <laughs> you may laugh at me now, but that is not my conclusion. It is not yet over until it is over. It is not yet over until it is over. I might not have a car now, but I'm going there. <laughs> I might not have a baby now, but I'm going there. I might not have a job now, but I'm going there. My church might not be big, but I'm going there. I might not have a husband now, but I'm getting there. I might not have twins now, but I'm getting there. Are you laughing at me because I'm buried? I'm getting there. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. What the Lord is about to do for them that love God. Somebody shot fire. <laughs> 